Hello, this is Brave Sir Robin coming to you from Parts Unknown. Here today with another DVD review with a DVD from another independent wrestling fed. I have Evolve 4 Danielson vs. Fish. This took place about last year and I think it's a good starting point for Evolve, so I'm going to talk about it and see if it's any good and talk about whether Evolve is worth following or if it isn't. First thing I'm going to mention is that I really do like the setup for this venue. It looks like the old NWA setup from the 80s with all the flags from various countries hanging around the arena. Although they don't have a Parts Unknown flag. With all the lineage of various wrestlers who come from Parts Unknown, I find that a bit disappointing. So the first match is John Moxley versus Brody Lee. Brody Lee's a decent enough big man. And but Moxley, he's really someone I don't get the fuss about, to be honest. I think his wrestling is average at best, but his promos, he just sounds like a drunk guy rambling. He's not really doing anything I haven't seen before. It's a quick match, luckily, but they spend most of the time outside whipping each other into the, into the guardrails and throwing each other around, which oddly doesn't lead to any count-out or disqualification or anything. I know Evolve isn't a hardcore fed, but still, I guess the referee's just being a little relaxed with the rules for whatever reason. So then, after doing that for a while, they get back in the ring and both come in with chairs, and before one even hits the other, the referee then calls for the bell and we get a double disqualification. And then it is announced that both guys are now suspended from Evolve. What? Seriously? I mean... Moxley seems shocked, and Brody just lays into him with a boot to the face afterwards anyway. It's a really lame finish to what wasn't a very great match to begin with. I don't know why they went with this. It wasn't a very good opener at all. Next up, we have a four-way match with Ricochet, Drake Younger, Rich Swan, and Chris Dickinson. And Evolve doesn't do a very good job of giving these guys any sort of distinguishable personality by having all four guys enter to the ring to the same theme music. Apparently Evolve doesn't believe in theme music for some reason, but I think theme music is a very important part of wrestling. I think it leads to a very important thing that any young wrestler should have. Individuality. That, that's how they're supposed to make themselves stand out and be memorable. It's a pretty chaotic match with all four doing stiff kicks and doing various flippy moves and then no selling each other. But no one of these guys really does anything to make themselves stand out from the other. It's Drake Younger that ends up getting the pin by hitting the vertebraker on Swan. Dickinson seems a bit pissed after this because while the pin was happening, he had Ricochet in a Cobra clutch and didn't even notice the pin happening. He then leaves complaining about Evolve's rules. Not sure if this leads to anything or not. It's not an awful match, but no one really stood out from it either, which is a real shame. I mean, they were good enough wrestlers, but... You can't have all guys just wearing tights and looking like each other and not even doing anything different from one and the other. Now we have a match for the Women's Superstars Uncensored World Title. That's right, the current title in Evolve is a Women's World Title from another federation. We have Mercedes Martinez versus Tina San Antonio. I have a couple, seen a couple of uh, WSU DVDs, but I have no idea what Tina San Antonio ever did to earn a title shot at this world title. Though she does look like she did Dallas for some reason. So, but the match anyway, it's Mercedes Martinez. She completely dominates this match. She's a really good wrestler. Antonio wasn't even in her league, and she just gets totally squashed in about a couple of minutes and then loses to a fisherman buster. Afterwards, Mercedes gets on the mic and then issues an open challenge, which is then answered by a video package from Os or the formerly awesome but then amazing Kong. Something to look forward to on a future DVD, I guess. Now we have Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole. There's no real storyline here, just a good back and forth match with two guys who are up and comers on the independent scene. Cole is pretty generic, but Gargano, he at least shows a bit of personality at least. The match is decent and Cole wins with a victory roll, but the real weirdness is what happens after the match. They let Adam Cole on the mic, which is fine, and he talks about how he looks forward to competing in Evolve, and that's fine enough, but then Jimmy Jacobs comes out, then acts in a real swishy manner and makes passes at Cole for some reason, and makes fun of Gargano for the loss to Adam Cole. Adam Cole then decides he doesn't care for Jimmy Jacobs, making references to wanting his sweet ass. Can't say I disagree with him on that and challenges Jimmy Jacobs to a match at the next Evolve volume. So was this really the way to set up the, a, the, a match for the next volume? It was a good match, but a really odd aftermath. So now we have some tag team action with Jigsaw and Hello Wicked taking on the team of Aeroform, Flip Kendrick and Lewis Linden. Just so I can, just so we can say, I'm not just pointing at the genericness of various wrestlers. This match does have a few memorable characters with the Shakara roster members, plus Linden and Kendrick are pretty... They stand out a bit as well. I still yet to figure out why Lewis Linden dresses up like Afro Samurai, though. 
in the match itself. It's a pretty good tag match. The Shikara guys do a good job with the two lesser experienced guys. They pull out a pretty good match. Probably the best match involving L Linden and Kendrick that I have ever seen. The Shikara team that gets the win with a go to sleep and a super kick combo when Hollow Wicked then pins Kendrick. The match it felt like it went by pretty quick, but while taking the loss, Arrow Form still came out looking pretty good, so it was a good match. So now we have a match between Sammy Callahan and Eric Cannon. For the first three quarters of the match, it starts out pretty good with each guy hitting each other, trading chops and hard headbutts, and some grueling looking submission moves, but towards the end of the match, it actually starts to get pretty ridiculous. They end up brawling to the outside, and I'll point out for this match, you can hear the referee making a 20 count, unlike what we didn't hear during Moxley and Lee earlier. Cannon then catches Callahan and nails it with a nice looking exploder suplex in the aisle entranceway. You'd think this is something that would take a guy out, but Callahan just powers up to his feet screaming and returns with an exploder suplex of his own to Cannon, who then does the same thing. I know this is something that's commonplace in Japanese matches, and I have seen it before, but it doesn't mean I don't find it ridiculous from them as well. Both guys f fight some more, make it to the ring, continue doing the Japanese thing with more hard hits and screaming, and afterwards it and seems like someone is about to go down. They do wear down a bit, and both guys keep kicking for each other, kicking each other, and kicking out of each other's big moves until Cannon misses a shining wizard and gets caught with a stretch muffler and taps out. A lot of people are going to disagree with me complaining about this. I mean, you see it a lot in these scenes, but put it the other way. If John Cena powered out of an exploder suplex on the floor, people would be complaining. So I'm going to complain about it here. I think some people on, who watch indie wrestling will let something slide that when they see it on TV will complain about it. And this is one of those things. It, it looked really stupid, I thought. I'd really, it really dragged down this match between two guys who I normally do consider good workers. Feel free to disagree. That's what the comment section is for. That's what Twitter's for. That's what my Facebook group is for. I do open debate, but that's how this is just how I feel about this match. I did not like this. Before we get to the next match, we have Johnny Gargano come out for a random promo where he reminds us that the next Evolve taping, Adam Cole will be facing Jimmy Jacobs. I guess they had some time to kill, but I don't see why they bothered to put this on the DVD. I mean, we already knew that. So now we have some tag team action with two teams that I do enjoy watching. We have Up in Smoke, Cheech and Cloudy, versus the Osirian Portal, Ophidian and Amasis. Two teams from Shakira. I really do wish Evolve did use theme music for the wrestlers, though, because it's just not the same for seeing the Osirian Portal come out to some generic tune instead of something with more flash, not doing any of their dancing and other cool stuff that they do. Some people may be put off by their odd costumes, but the Portal, they're a really fun team to watch, and I really do like their creative offense. Cheech and Cloudy, they're, they're pretty good as well, though, too. Both teams, they do mesh together quite well, and put on a very exciting tag team match. It is Cheech and Cloudy who get the win with a double team power bomb and kick to the face combination. A really good tag match between re two really good teams. I recommend this match a lot. Now we have Chuck Taylor versus Jimmy Jacobs. Story of this match, besides Jimmy Jacobs getting on the mic and talking about Johnny Gargano's pretty lips, is how both him and Chuck Taylor are both undefeated in Evolve, and while Evolve has no title belt, they do have a wins leader and a streak leader, which is the person with the highest number of wins and the most wins in a row. I guess it's cool they do have something to fight for. Maybe I'm just old-fashioned and would still prefer them to have an actual title belt. It's a pretty good match, too, though. People just associate Chuck Taylor with comedy a lot, but in Evolve, he's been showing how good he really can be. Both guys get in some good offense, and it's Chuck Taylor who gets the win with the Omega Driver, which he has renamed the Awful Waffle. Afterwards, Chuck Taylor gets on the mic and is congratulated on his win, and now being 3-0. and But Chuck protests and says that he should be 4-0 because on Volume 1 he had a qualifying match where he won against Cheech, but it's not counted because it was considered a qualifying match. See, now even Chuck Taylor is pointing out the loopholes in Evolve's crappy win system. So now we have the main event and the match that this DVD was named after, Brian Danielson versus Bobby Fish. Now this match was during last summer when Brian Danielson was fired from the WWE for violating their PG rating and choking Justin Roberts with a tie, but I'm not going to go into a big rant about that ridiculousness because WWE did eventually hire him back and are starting to push him once again. But before he was hired back, Brian Danielson made his return to several indies, and Evolve was one of the ones he stopped off at. And Bobby Fish was his hand-picked opponent due to the time that they spent together while in Noah in Japan. For pro wrestling Noah, obviously. So both guys, they had their entrances, but I'm still disappointed that Brian Danielson doesn't come out to Europe's final countdown. That's fairly disappointing. 
But in honor of Brian Danielson's recent firing, the fans then throw ties into the ring, which can now be used as a deadly weapon. And the start of a chant of, you're gonna get your fucking head kicked in breaks out. Something you won't expect to hear on any WWE pay-per-view anytime soon, though I think that would be awesome if you did. The match itself, it's really good. I mean, Danielson's a great wrestler, and he does a very good job in this match with Bobby Fish, who also is pretty, seems pretty decent as well. I'm not quite familiar with him, though. If you're only someone who's only seen Daniel Bryan in the WWE and have only seen the tip of the iceberg for what this guy is capable of. And he, for this match, for his return to the Indies, he's making sure he does deliver in the ring rather than just living off of his reputation. I'm not familiar enough with Fish, like I said, but he does deliver. and He knows it's a big deal for Evolve and ends up looking good in the match. But you know he isn't winning over Brian Danielson and ends up tapping out to a nice-looking leg submission, which I really don't know the name of, so it's hard to describe. A very good match. It lives up to its hype, and it's good to see Brian Danielson letting loose in the ring once again. So that's Evolve 4, Danielson vs. Fish. The f first bunch of matches on this DVD, they're pretty forgettable without much standing out. But once you get past those, the action picks up pretty good for the most part. And while a lot of the wrestlers are pretty bland, I'm really and I'm really not a fan of the win system that they do, I, I'm more of the feeling that wrestlers should be fighting for something. I know they're trying to say wins matter and they're trying to take the MMA route, but... I don't know, I prefer storylines and titles and drama to, in my wrestling, to be honest. Maybe, maybe that's just me, but that's just it. I'd still recommend this DVD, though, if you really want a good starting point for Evolve. I was thinking about this one or Volume 1. I decided to go with this one to review. I thought it's an it's a even better starting point than Volume 1 was. Both are good, but this one's slightly better. And they do, they do do a good job of letting newcomers know what's going on here. So if you want to check out Evolve, I recommend this DVD. But know what you're getting into first before you get into Evolve. It, some people may find it odd. There's still a very good indie, but they still got a while to go to. They've only just reached volume 9 after two years, so it's easy to catch up if you really wanted to. So until you bother checking this out, remember, support independent wrestling. This is Braves for Robin, signing off.